So I've talked a lot recently about two particular films that I think have lost a lot of steam uh, when it comes to the upcoming Academy Awards. Now, I, I, these aren't the only two that I think have lost a lot of possibility, but th they've lost a, a lot of possibility for reasons other than movies I've talked about previously. You know, like Beautiful Boy and Boy Erased, I think, are two movies that kind of dropped off the map completely because the reviews just weren't that great. They're not to say that they were bad, but they just, in a year that has so much, weren't well received enough, in my opinion, to stand out amongst a crowd. But the two movies that I've been referencing a lot uh, over the past little while are that of Vice and Mary Queen of Scots. These two movies early on in the process would have been considered heavy frontrunners for several different awards. And now, as a result of several different factors, I think have floated away in a sense. That's not to say I don't think either of them have contention. I think that there's still possibility for the two of them. But I think that there are a lot of reasons that these two movies have sort of flunked when it's come to their chances at the Oscars. And I want to talk about reasons I feel that way. I want to talk about one primary reason for each and then one as a whole. And the one as a whole is very straightforward. No critics have seen these movies yet. We don't know if they're good or bad. Come this time, I mean, we're in late September at this point. And in my opinion, October is where really th things start to kick off. You know, you start getting the bigger... I mean, the first week of October, we're getting A Star is Born, which is considered to be a frontrunner for Best Picture. The week after, you're getting First Man and Beautiful Boy. I mean, things are going to start moving like this. And at this point, most commonly throughout the years, the frontrunners for awards, or even those that most people agree will be nominated have been shown at large film festivals like Venice or, um, you know, uh, TIFF or any of the other numerous film festivals and will have been received in some light by critics, whether it be in a negative fashion or a positive fashion. Neither of these movies have seen any kind of reception yet. They've remained quiet. They've remained hidden. And as a result of that, You've seen the movies that have gained this critical praise, like Roma, and First Man, and A Star is Born, um, and, you know, uh, Can You Ever Forgive Me, Snuck Out, Green Book. You've seen all these movies creep up even further because you're hearing so much about them, and Academy voters are noticing more and more about these movies because they're given more time to listen to critics, to see reviews. They're going to stay in the spotlight a lot longer than movies like Vice and Mary Queen of Scots that nobody has seen yet. You're going to forget those two names come November if nobody has seen them yet, including a widespread audience, because well-known films still matter, clearly, to the Academy. They made a very strong point over the summer to, to show that they care about popularity. And when you have a movie that nobody has seen, and it's already the kickoff to where the strong bulk of these movies are coming out, I don't really think you have much of anything. Yes, they're supposed to come out in December, and I recognize that's still slightly far away, but if they really had confidence in these films, I think you would have already seen them screened. At least Mary Queen of Scots, which seems finished. Um, Vice does not seem finished, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, I'm, I'm very surprised Mary Queen of Scots is not shown anywhere. You know, we've been seeing that same goddamn trailer running for months, and you've got Saoirse Ronan and Margot Robbie both coming hot off Oscar nominations, I talked in a previous video about, I mean, this thing seemed like the perfect setup for Oscar contention. And all of a sudden, people are forgetting its name. Because critics are forgetting ex it exists. Because the production company seems to forget it exists. And they're not placing it anywhere. They're not showing it to anyone. They're not letting it get rave reviews. Like something like Roma. Which I don't think many people would have predicted for a lot a couple months ago. And then it came far out of left field when people were calling it a masterpiece. So... 
Yes, I think critical reviews are pertinent to keep, to keep yourself on the stage, to make sure that people know who you are, because at the end of the day, you do have to campaign. And without, like, rave reviews that last throughout a strong period of time, you're not going to get that. Think of Dunkirk, which came out in July to some of the best critical reviews of the year. And as a result of that, people remembered the name Dunkirk up until November and December. And then, sure enough, come January, you had that movie in your nominations. So, it's, it's a worrying sign to me that neither of these movies have been seen by anybody or, you know, have been given the chance to be reviewed. That scares me. And I talked about how Vice almost doesn't seem finished. Um, so we've seen this movie go through like six or seven title changes. I remember a point where it was backseat. I st literally in my video, I've, I've had two times of bad luck with this. With Boy Erased, I talked about the fact that I thought it had no chance because it was coming out in September. I, I published the video two minutes later, the news article comes out that it's coming out in November. And then... I talk about Backseat, and then the article releases after I upload the video that it's now called Vice. So it's called Vice now. It was called Backseat. I think it was called Cheney at one point. I don't really know. But it's from the director of The Big Short, Adam McKay. And this is a movie that, at the beginning of the year, I would have told you I think you're going to see this movie everywhere. Because Adam McKay proved, with The Big Short, that he is a very stylistic and unique director. And I think that in this year especially, with so much coming, you need to have a very specific voice. You need to be saying something and delivering a story in a way that is unconventional for filmmakers. And whether you agree with how the big short portrayed things, whether you agree with, oh, I think that, you know having a sides with Margot Robbie talking to the camera in, in a bathtub made me understand this more. Whether you agree with that or not, you can't dispute the fact that in a sense it was unique, and I think that's what drew the Academy to it. If I if I recall correctly, it won Best Adapted Screenplay. I think he was nominated for Director, and it was everywhere. And you would think that Vice would have that kind of similar element of it. I mean, the story of Dick Cheney seems like Adam McKay would would have some fun with it. But not only has it not been reviewed anywhere, but we have seen nothing from this movie. It just got its title changed in September, and we have seen no stills. The pictures on IMDb are the ones that, like, paparazzi or, like, some guy with his iPhone took from a hill when they could see them shooting, so he took a picture of, of Christian Bale in his makeup. And there are no stills, there's no trailer... And there's no poster. Nobody except for film fans knows what this movie is. And think about how successful it would be. When a mainstream audience would see a trailer for this, they would probably see a very unique stylistic kind of trailer. They would see from the director of The Big Short and Anchorman, and then they would see Christian Bale, Amy Adams, Steve Carell, Bill Pullman, Sam Rockwell. Like, this movie should have been a slam dunk. You've got Sam Rockwell coming off an Oscar win, ready to take another one for playing George Bush. I mean, I just don't understand what happened here. Were there post-production problems? Were there issues in shooting? I can't believe we've seen nothing for this movie. Nobody knows what this is going to be like. And, again, it's, it's almost October. you got to start getting in the playing field. Now... I do think this has hurt its chances in categories like Best Picture, where, as I said, movies like Green Book and Can You Ever Forgive Me have kind of snuck up um, and managed themselves in the contention for that. And on top of that, you know, Black Panther, I think, has on its side all the controversy over Best Popular Film, so I think it's almost secured a spot in there, too. And then you have to ask yourself, well, do we have room for this movie that nobody has even seen anything of, and at this point, a very minute percentage of the population even knows what it is. Um, I don't think that that means it has no contention anywhere. Um, I would not be shocked if Christian Bale snuck in for lead actor, though I do think lead actor is an interesting category this year, so I think we'll have to look out for that. The only two that I would really say I'm positive will be nominated right now would be Bradley Cooper and Ryan Gosling uh, in their respective films and, and roles. I don't know per se about any, I know there's a third that's like pretty sure. It's not coming to me right now, but those are the two. And then I think there is some room for negotiation when it comes to the other three spots. 
But I think Christian Bale could sneak in there because he's kind of back to his whole method acting thing and the Academy has shown that they really, really enjoy him doing that and he's back in like a kind of, kind of a movie that would actually campaign for awards. And then you've got Amy Adams, who from the beginning of the award season has been discussed to be a frontrunner. Um, people, there's the whole idea of it's her turn. Um, that phrase likes to float around a lot. I do kind of believe in that phrase. She's been nominated for five Oscars. There was a large amount of backlash when she wasn't nominated for Arrival, and there's no better time than now, I think, when she's portraying a real-life individual in a film like this to sort of redeem themselves and give her an Oscar. Um, would I call her a set win? No. You know, you've got competitors like Regina King for If Beale Street Could Talk, and you've got Claire Foy for First Man, so I wouldn't call her a sure bet, but I th honestly, no matter how this movie ends up turning out, whether we get a poster tomorrow, you know, whether we get it in two days, I don't know, I would still see Amy Adams in supporting actress category. The big question mark comes in, will it be anywhere else? And I think the answer to that will be revealed depending on how soon we get anything from this movie. Now, on the flip side of the coin, you've got Mary Queen of Scots. And like I said, I talked about this in a previous video, where I thought that this movie was going to have a supreme shot at being nominated across the board. And I don't think that this movie got screwed for a reason like Vice, where we've just seen nothing from it. Like I said, we've been seeing that same damn trailer for months. I've been seeing that same thing at, like, every indie movie I go see. Um, you got Saoirse Ronan coming off her nomination, you got Margot Robbie coming off her nomination. I mean, this thing should be perfect. It's the Academy's type of film. It's a historical drama with lots of very nice production design and lots of very nice cinematography and lots of melodramatic Shakespearean era type acting. How can this movie not be nominated? Well, I'm going to tell you why. In my opinion, there's one reason. I think you have Yorgos Lanthimos to thank for Mary Queen of Scots getting uh, fucked. I think that The Favorite, which has skyrocketed in terms of potential uh, after its reviews from Venice, which were stellar, and TIFF, um, or was it, it might, actually, I take that back. I think that was the one that wasn't at TIFF. But, I mean, The Favorite looks, to, as I was talking about unique and stylistic earlier, We've learned that Yorgos is a very stylistic director, and he seems to be taking a very, very interesting approach on this genre. And the Academy is finally going to have a chance to award a film in a genre that they love that takes a unique and original spin on it, that does something neat with it, um, that makes it a comedy, seemingly, or at least a dark comedy, um, that does something different with direction and writing and cinematography. I think this is going to be a breath of fresh air for them, and I think they are going to love it, I think they're going to eat it up, and I think it is going to be everywhere. And I think they're going to be so focused on this film and into the favorite that they're going to forget about what seems to be, I can't speak from seeing the film, nobody can remember that, but what looks to be a relatively bland, standard reincarnation of a lot of the same historical kind of dramas that we've seen in so many previous years that get nominated that nobody cares about. And with Shakespeare in Love, you know, that was arguably a unique kind of take on that genre. And they did give it Best Picture, um, despite everyone, you know, having common sense and realizing that Saving Private Ryan's a better film. But that's, you know, I don't even want to talk about that. So, I think that this is a perfect opportunity for them to do that again. I'm not saying it's going to win Best Picture, but I'm saying it's going to be in a lot of places and up for contention in a lot of places. And I think with their gaze so drawn on that movie, th this film that's been done before and been seen before and been replicated dozens of times and recognized dozens of times is going to be forgotten because they've got this new fresh, fresh baby here that they can, they can nurture, and they can feed it nominations. Because the Academy wants to show that they recognize unique films. That's, that's a goal of theirs. And this is the perfect opportunity for them to say, hey, we're not just going to nominate the same old shit. 
you know, I mean, we'll still nominate the, the genre we really like, but, you know, look at how different this movie is compared to, you know, that one over there. Do I think that Mary Queen of Scots has no potential? No. I think there is, like, kind of a squeezable spot in leading actress for maybe Robbie or Ronan. I don't know about supporting actress, I th but I do think one of them could squeeze in there. And I think, you know, production design, costume design, makeup and hairstyling, um, cinematography, a lot of the technical awards, I do think Mary Queen of Scots still has a shot in it. But when, when you're referring to the, the big six, as they like to call it, um, I think it just got screwed. It got released in a year where likely a better and more unique film sort of centric around the same elements of Mary Queen of Scots is going to top it and it's going to beat it out and they're going to it's it's they're not going to cancel each other out. The favorite's just going to cancel Mary Queen of Scots out. I that's the way I see it going. It's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is sometimes. So, that's what I think about these two films. Nevertheless, I'm still excited to see both. Vice, in particular, I, I'm very excited to see that movie. Cast, uh, when I looked at the IMDb page of that, the cast alone had my movie ticket bought. Um, next week, um, despite me not getting the Sisters Brothers or the Old Man and the Gun, which I will be doing reviews for when they come out, I plan on starting doing to do reviews regularly now that the award season films are coming out. Next week, I will talk about A Star is Born when I see that. That does release here, and then the week after is First Man, so... We're really going to start to get going. Um, I tweeted earlier that to rebel for me not getting Old Man and the Gun and the Sisters Brothers, I'm going to go see Smallfoot this weekend. Um, so that'll be great. But, uh, yeah, keep looking forward to content like this. I did finally open up my Google Doc that is now labeled 2019 Oscar Predictions, um, and that will be updated. That video will come in November, more than likely. So keep an eye out for more award season coverage. I have a lot planned, uh, especially next week. That Star is Born trailer will be coming out. The channel continues to grow more and more each day. Thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate your support. And I will see you all next time.